This month has been really challenging in the garden, but we've also harvested a lot of vegetables for the table. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly what's growing, all the challenges that we've been facing, all the pests, all the stuff that we've been doing to try to remedy the situation, and just overall how the garden is doing. Let's go. Hey guys and welcome back to Mini Urban Farm, a channel about gardening and homesteading in the suburbs. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through my entire garden, um, what's working, what's not working. And I have to say, I almost did not make this video because as a gardener, you want your garden to be perfect if you're showing everybody. Um, that is not the case right now. I will be the first one to say I have been definitely slacking on the garden um, and it shows, right? So I almost didn't make this video. I was really tempted to come in here and clean up everything um, and just kind of skip this month's garden tour, but I don't think that that would be real um, it wouldn't be transparent and as a gardener you're gonna have ups and downs you're gonna have times where the garden just sucks um, the garden is just not doing well that being said I have been able to harvest so much food for the table so the garden is still producing um, but it's not the prettiest right now let me show you exactly what I mean all right so starting over here um, we are at the beginning of the garden if you watch my other garden tours you'll recognize this is the entrance to my garden um, of course you have here two rosemary pots those are doing exceptionally well um, they just keep growing and I keep taking cuttings from them now this is where I have my grape tomatoes if you can see there's not a lot of foliage on them um, and there's actually not even a lot of tomatoes on them now in previous months in previous seasons I should say I have harvested upwards of 50 pounds of tomatoes um, and this is just not doing super well and I will tell you that it is largely due to pest you can see here um, once it focuses that there's a lot of pests on it. You can even see these little army worms and cutworms and all this stuff. Now, I will be the first one to tell you that I actually did not do a great job of pest control in the garden. Um, historically, I have not had to deal with that many pests. I've had um, leaf miners and I've had some cutworms, but not to this extent. For some reason, and I'm not sure exactly why, um, we have had a lot, a lot of pests in the garden. And I think it might actually be because they're doing, across the lake there, they're doing tons of construction. And so, of course, you're disturbing the natural habitat and all of that stuff has to go somewhere, right? So they find other places to, um, to live and to make their, their little home. Um, but this time, I mean, we have had we have had cutworms, we've had army worms, um, we've had a lot of different things. We've had aphids, um, which I really never had to deal with before. But the the thing about pest control, all right, which this season I definitely learned the hard way. Um, the thing about pest control is that you have to catch it early, right? Like you can't catch it. Hey, puppy dog, you want to be in the video? <laughs> Milo's coming to join us. Um, so you have to actually cast pest control really early, right? You can't let it get full of, of the mature insects and pests and then expect that they didn't lay eggs. And that's exactly what happened. They laid their eggs everywhere. So much so that I've been coming out here once I realized how detrimental it was, right? We, um, we went on a trip, um, just a short weekend trip, and I came back and I will show you in a minute. The majority of my kale was completely gone. The rest was inedible um, just because it, it looked like like French lace, you couldn't even tell that the kale was actually there. The same thing with the tomato plants. I, I originally saw that there were some cutworms or army worms or whatever it is um, on the plants and I just let it go and that was huge mistake number one. If you are a newbie gardener, do not let this go um, because those little ones turn into massive, massive army worms, cutworms, all these things that you don't want eating your plants and the problem isn't that they're eating the plants. The problem is that they lay eggs in mass quantities and then once you go and pick them off which is what I did I picked off all the mature pests and I put them in soapy water I killed them off um, and then naively thought that that would get rid of it I, um, I put on diatomaceous earth um, and other organic you know stuff to make the pests go away and it worked for about a week or two and then a whole nother round of them came because they had laid their let their little eggs they had you know planted all the little babies and it's nearly impossible to get rid of them now so that is mistake number one I am so used to not having to be that hands-on with my tomatoes I mean if you've watched any of my garden videos before if you watch any of my previous garden tours um, you know that I have had tons of tomatoes like it takes me hours to harvest tomatoes sometimes and this is not the case um, I have taken off all the tomatoes as they get even a little bit orange I will take them off because I've noticed that if I don't I don't get to eat them. <laughs> the pests are eating them first. Um, they make their way, they burrow themselves inside the tomatoes 
and then I don't get to eat them. So as soon as I notice that they can be ripened off the vine, I have just been taking them. I did leave these ones just so I could show you. There are some ripe tomatoes, um, but ult ultimately this season overall, I have not been getting a lot of tomatoes and I don't know that I will be getting tons of tomatoes just because of the level of pest damage that has occurred so far. All right, so on another happier note, right, we have tomatoes on that side. We have our um, parsley. So I have curled parsley in here, which you can see. I have flat leaf parsley. I just kind of, you know, threw the seeds in here. You can also see I have some caterpillars. So besides the pest, I do have some caterpillars and I think that is actually a monarch butterfly um, caterpillar. Someone in the comments, correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I've seen so far, that's what they look like. I've never had them in my garden before, so if that's what it is, I'm gonna be super excited. Um, if that's not what it is, I will come back and pick them off. Um, but so far, I have seen several caterpillars. I've also seen um, a lot of these little mushrooms, which I have had in the garden before, so that's something you know that usually I see anyway, but I've also seen some ladybugs. So those are good things that are happening in the garden, and you can definitely see here the amount of pest damage that you know they have caused now i came in here and i thinned out these tomato plants if you can see like there's not a lot of foliage on them because i took off everything that looked you know like dead um just so that the plant is not having to deal with those anymore but they just came in and did their thing all over again so i mean it just i am getting some tomatoes you can see um but i often find things like this where there's a tomato and you can see it is ripe but there's a little hole in it, right? So the pest definitely got it. Something burrowed itself inside of it. And if I open it up, there's probably a worm inside of it or some sort of pest. Um, so I haven't really been able to harvest tons of them. So yeah, that's my tomato situation right now. Moving over here to the other side, you can see I have tons of beans growing. Now these are green beans. Um, I think they were originally supposed to be zebra beans, but they don't look like striped on the inside or the outside so i'm not exactly sure um usually the beans are striped on the on the inside of them but not so much but i am getting tons and tons of beans off of these plants they just keep flowering if you can see obviously they are a climbing bean they're a pole bean so you can see even here um, on the wall over here they are kind of just climbing every day or so i come over here and i just trellis them all over the top um, I have been cutting them back a little bit just because I don't want them to get as unruly. Um, but yeah, we've been harvesting a lot from these. And then the kale. This is probably the saddest kale patch I've ever seen. Um, there are definitely tons of cutworms that came up in here and just ripped up everything. The only reason I have not ripped it up yet, right, because I will be getting rid of this. Well, one, I didn't rip it up because I picked up all the, all the worms and hoped that it was going to get much better. And sadly, it did not. Some of the kale started to regrow itself. You see some little baby kale um, leaves up in here, but it just, yeah, it didn't, it didn't work. Um, it's just too far gone at this point because whatever did try to regrow itself, the little baby larvae and pest and all the other stuff just regrew themselves too. So I will be coming in and just ripping this entire thing out and probably planting some more herbs just to try and you know keep down the pests. On this side of the same raised bed, you can see I have some beans. Now, I have actually been harvesting tons of beans from these. Um, these are the pink potted pole beans, and I don't know if there's some um, I just harvested yesterday. So I think they're actually, let me see if I can find one for you guys. Oh, here you go. Um, so you can see they're kind of starting to turn a little pink. Um, they actually get like a really bright pink color just like that one so they actually get even more pink the entire pod turns pink and they're really cool i mean they do turn back to green when you cook them but they're just really productive even for this i mean there's not that many planted in here i think there's maybe like 10 and they're not even growing like that high i definitely thought they were a trellising bean they do trellis a little bit but it's not really like the same vines they're more of like a bush bean hybrid i'm not exactly sure what they are but i mean they are producing tons all right, so my scallions are doing pretty well. I have this scallion plant here and then these ones over here on this side. Now, these are the ones that I originally took from the grocery store. I planted them. Um, you did see, or I did see, I did see some browning of the tips like as soon as I planted them, but I think it was probably because the roots were trying to get themselves established. And after that, I mean, there has just been you know, continuous growth. So that's really good. And I really, you know, I really like taking them from the grocery store and planting them out instead of having to start them from seed. 
Over here we have some eggplants. Um, these are the little finger eggplant that I was really excited to start at the beginning of the season. Um, you do have some flowers coming out. Um, they do produce really pretty purple flowers. Um, you can see all those little flower buds over here. Um, and I think we actually have, oh, there's one somewhere around here that's flowering. There you go. So we have some really pretty purple flowers coming out and I mean, they're just doing really well. We have been getting some, some holes in our plants, as you can see here, um, but for the most part, once I pick them off, um, I haven't seen too many come back, so that's a good sign. And then here are our Lesia peppers. Now, I didn't expect these to get so huge. They are massive, and this is like the size of my palm. I definitely didn't expect that. Um, we have a few of them almost ready to pick. I can see some signs of like yellow coming out here. So I think they'll probably turn red hopefully soon. And then we have a bunch more um, littler ones or smaller ones um, and a whole bunch more flowers on them. So, I mean, I'm really excited because I think I shared with you guys last time, um, I've not really been successful in growing peppers before, but this season, um, just putting them in a raised bed instead of trying to grow them in containers, that has done a wonderful job so far. All right, so now on to more tomatoes. You can see behind me, um, I have more tomato plants. I have eight of the um, orange peach tomatoes, and I'm actually going to come in here and just pick some of them. The ones that are turning this orangey color, this is the color that they are going to stay. Um, I have picked a few of them so far. Now these ones don't seem to be as prolific as the cherry tomatoes and the grape tomatoes that I've grown in the past. Um, I've only gotten maybe a handful of these so far. Hopefully it'll pick up because I am seeing a lot more little yellow flowers but they don't seem to have a lot of pest problems as well. Now, I have had to pick off um, armyworms and cutworms off of these plants. Don't get me wrong, I have definitely had to do that. Um, but they don't seem to be as persistent with these plants, and I'm not sure if that's because they're more pest resistant or maybe the different type of tomato. Um, I would honestly have to go back and, and look at the type of tomato and see if maybe that's a quality that they have. But there's also a ton of parsley that was volunteer parsley. It just kept coming back. This is where my parsley was last season, actually. Um, I ripped it all out. I planted my tomatoes, and then I saw more parsley growing. I didn't remove it just because the parsley seems to be a little bit more pest resistant for the most part. Um, I do get some holes in the parsley sometimes, but definitely nowhere near the amount of damage I've gotten with other plants, especially my tomatoes. So I left um, this side of the raised bed, if you can see back here, this side of the raised bed um, has the same type of tomatoes as that side of the raised bed back there. It is completely covered in parsley, right? The ground cover here is parsley around those plants. Um, and those ones back there don't have any ground cover. They're just kind of open and um, yeah, they, they don't have anything planted underneath them. Um, nothing grew back from that space. So I have noticed that on these ones here in front of me, they don't get as many worms on them. They don't get as many cutworms, army worms, things like that. But the ones back there, I have had to pick off um, a continuous number of these horrible pests um, that you don't want eating your plants. I've also noticed that the ones that do get infected, like there's an actual like worm crawling inside of the tomato, all the ones that I've had to pick off that were rotten like that were on that side, not on this side. So there's something to be said for ground cover. Um, I didn't intentionally plant it I did not intentionally plant it out. Um, in previous seasons, I have actually planted ground cover and for some reason I just I didn't do it this time. Um, but in the future, you know, if you're looking to plant something out that you know is going to be in a high pest area or whatever the case is, you're worried about pests, you know, it's worth planting out ground cover because there's definitely a correlation between the number of pests and not having ground cover. In the middle of this same raised bed, um, sandwiched in between my parsley tomato mix over there and my straight solo tomatoes over here, um, I have some basil. Now this is Genevieve's basil. As you can see, it is getting a lot of damage as well. Definitely not nearly as much as some of the other ones, um, but this, you know, it's it's being eaten and I have picked off some, some of the worms off of this as well and some caterpillars and stuff. Um, now I took cuttings of this um, just to propagate and regrow, um, just in case, you know, because I've had problems with basil in the past where I unintentionally kill it um, so I took some clippings um, and I'm actually regrowing some in the greenhouse right now but I mean I have been able to use it we don't use tons of parsley sometimes I'll make pesto and stuff but I mean usually when I cook with parsley it's maybe like three or four leaves and that's it so I have still been able to use it um, you can still use leaves that are you know that have holes in them like this just wash them and make sure there's no pest on them you know just because they have holes doesn't mean you have to throw them away but I mean you can you know 
at your own discretion use them i'm not telling you to to eat things that had pests on them but i definitely do you can see it looks like somebody just took a freaking bite out of this here all right so before i show you my cucumber plants and the rest the rest of my raised beds um, i just want to talk about something else that contributed to the garden looking a little bit not so great this time around um, we put in an irrigation system at the beginning of the season right i made an entire video about how to put in the irrigation system um, and the challenges associated with installing the irrigation system and i really love the irrigation system i would not go back to manual watering at all because right now i don't have to worry about coming out here in really really hot weather and watering all the plants however having an irrigation system presents another challenge which is how much should you actually water your plants right because prior to having the irrigation system i would water my plants right i would take my my gallon or two gallon or whatever it is watering container my pail um, and i would come in here and i would manually water all the plants until it got too hot or until it looked like the soil was mostly moist um, and that was that now with a drip irrigation system it's watering more consistently um, and what actually ended up happening was i'm really over watering my plants a lot and you can't necessarily tell until it's too late because the drip irrigation system right you're dripping in one spot one spot one spot and it's going underneath it's not really covering or saturating the entire you know the entire soil um, and then you're, you're really not able to tell until you're seeing the signs of stress on your plant now I will also say that during this time um, we are in Central Florida it has not rained a ton right it hasn't actually rained at all i think yesterday was the very first day that it actually rained um in about a month and a half so it has been extraordinarily dry out here in the process of all of that i wanted to ensure that my plants are getting watered so i was watering twice daily i think it was maybe for 20 minutes or 15 minutes and i have been dropping it down um, as i see signs of stress on the plants i have definitely dropped it down um to less watering time however since it's been so dry out here um, the lawn in the front of the yard right in the front of the house and you can see we have some some lawn there um, and on the other side of the house is all lawn right and so mr. mini urban farm <laughs> decided that he was gonna add extra time to the sprinkling to the sprinkler system now I did not know that um, and I didn't think that it would have that much of an impact once I found out that he was really watering like extra every single day so on top of my overwatering the plants on a mass scale um, with the irrigation system now he was also turning on the sprinklers which actually do reach this side of the garden right the sprinklers that are on that side they reach all the way over here because before we put this garden in place those were the sprinklers responsible for watering this entire side of the yard so not only are these plants being double watered and triple watered right we are getting tons more water um, and it just hasn't been a good month for my watering system to be honest so if you have any you know doubts on how much you're watering watch for the signs of stress in your plant but the plants don't actually need as much water as you would think and it's a really common problem to overwater your plants beginner gardeners intermediate gardeners advanced gardeners do it even i have been gardening for at least 10 years i think it's been over 10 years now and i still um, overwater my plants sometimes i will say that it's harder to overwater your plants if you are watering manually than if you are watering with a drip irrigation system because it is just a set and go you know i haven't been coming out here every single day to water it and actually look at the plants i walk through the garden every day and i harvest most days but to actually get in here and look at the signs of stress um, i have not been doing that as much so definitely one of the dangers of overwatering let me show you exactly what i mean all right so really this is one of the main reasons i considered not making this video at all um, but I don't think that would be, you know, the right thing to do. I want to document my entire garden all the time with all the challenges so I'm able to share with you guys. If you can see here, there are a ton of brown leaves. Now, they didn't just turn brown originally. Um, they were more like this. Um, you see like a lot of yellowing on the plants um, and then turning brown also and then they turn fully brown and die off. Now, originally there was a lot of yellow leaves and to be honest with you guys, I just did not pay that much attention and this is the result so if you're going to grow a garden and you're going to be growing things that you know you really want to take care of um, maybe pay a lot of attention to the amount of water now i know that this is 
a cause of overwatering and not disease, right? Because a lot of these signs and symptoms of overwatering, also they, they really do overlap with like the signs of disease and pests and everything else um, that can be killing your plants. However, I know that this is a sign of overwatering because once I turned off and reduced the amount of watering that I was providing to the plants, um, this is what happened, which was nice, bright green healthy leaves so you can see here this is new growth um, all of these over here these tiny little leaves that are coming out um, are bright green so that is how i know that when the plants are getting less water they are producing healthier leaves and then the older ones the brown ones back there are dying off as a result of the overwatering previously now even with the amount of overwatering i'm still getting tons of cucumelons right these are my little um, tiny little cucumbers. They're called Mexican sour gherkins and you can see um, I am actually getting a, quite a few of them. I have been harvesting tons of them. They look like tiny little baby watermelons. And you can see the little stripes um, as they grow. They kind of have that more definitive set of stripes. Um, they do taste a little bit more sour. Um, they're supposed to have more of like a lemony flavor which I don't know if it's lemony flavor but they definitely taste more sour to me. So cucumelons or mouse melons or Mexican sour gherkins or you wanna, whatever you want to call them, um, they're really good. I, I like the flavor. Um, a lot of my family does not like cucumbers, um, but I like growing cucumbers. However, I think that in the future, you know, I don't know if I'm going to grow um, these ones. They, they're not as fun to grow, for me at least, as regular cucumbers. I like using regular cucumbers and I like making tzatziki sauce and all that stuff. Um, and these are actually, they blend in really well. Um, usually when the plants are more green um, they blend into the plants and they're a little bit harder to harvest um, for me at least so this was one that I was really excited to grow but to be honest I'm not sure if I'll be growing it in the future I know that a lot of people really enjoy growing Mexican sour gherkins um, but for me I think I might just go ahead and stick to regular sized cucumbers from now on I also have tons of cayenne peppers that are coming out here now, these are taking a little bit longer to develop, but they will eventually turn red. Um, I do have actually quite a few of them, so I was really happy this season. This is definitely more peppers than I've ever been able to grow in the past. Um, it's not tons, I will say, but it's definitely more than I've been ever, ever able to get, so I'm happy with that. Alright, so on the opposite bed here, you can see I have some pole beans growing up. Now they're doing a really good job of trellising over as well. They're not nearly as bushy as the ones over there, um, but that's quite all right because they're actually producing a lot. Um, I have had tons of these. They are the Marvel of Venice pole beans. Um, I'm not sure if you can actually see them with me, but yeah, here we go. So there have been tons of these pole beans. Um, I have actually harvested quite a few of them um, and they are they're kind of just like, there you go they're kind of just coming through the trellis like that. Um, they grow uh, on the trellis, they grow on the, the upside of the trellis, um, and they actually started producing somewhere around here, so I'm actually able to grow, um, so I'm actually able to pick some of them off this side as well. You can see some signs of stress, right, with the overwatering, um, like these ones back here with the brown tips, um, but these new leaves, this new growth has definitely turned significantly more green. Um, of course, you know, it grows upwards and these are the, the newer leaves and they have gotten significantly more green once I stopped overwatering so much. Now these ones I find really interesting. Um, they are originally green and then when they turn yellow they are mature. Now I have picked them um, when they are a little bit more green and they have just green beans inside of them. The thing I find most interesting though is that when you open them up just like this, you actually get beans that are purple inside. Um, so the pods are yellow and you get these massive purple beans, which I think are so interesting. Um, I don't think I've ever grown anything like that before, right? So you can shell them, I think. You can use them just as like a shelled bean. But the insides are purple like this. Um, and I just, I mean, they are huge. They are massive bean pods. Um, and so I think that's super interesting. Um, and I've just been actually cooking them like green beans, right? And like a stir fry or something. But I think you can actually shell them and actually just cook the bean. All right, so right next to that, we have our arugula. Now, I remember saying at the beginning of the season that this was probably enough arugula for us. We used a lot of arugula during the colder months here, um, but as more things start growing, we don't really need that much arugula for salads and stuff. I have been using tons of arugula for salads, um, but there's just, I mean, there's about four square feet here. 
I do use the square foot gardening method, so I planted out approximately four square feet and I just kind of threw the seeds in here. Um, and this is, you know, the result of that. Now we have been harvesting this a lot for salads. We have been harvesting this a lot for eggs in the morning. And I actually just pick tons of it off and feed it to the chickens and they love it. Um, and it makes their egg yolks a lot more yellow in combination, you know, with like free ranging and all the other stuff that they eat. Um, but yeah, we have plenty of arugula and I think for right now, this is probably a good amount. I know last season I planted out about twice the amount. So I think I'm happy with the four square feet this time. And then right next to it are loofah, right? So I have loofah growing up the trellis. Um, now I have four loofah plants. This one is actually much taller. Um, it goes almost yeah, all the way up actually now. Um, and so these loofah plants, um, I really wanted to plant out loofah and I did. Now, was it a good idea to plant out loofah? That I'm not sure about. So apparently loofah gets really massive um, and takes over everything in the garden. So far it's grown pretty slowly. Um, however, I think that might be because there's not tons of space in this bed and I'm growing it up rather than giving it more space on the ground. I, I don't know if I'm going to keep my loofah in here. Um, I know that it does get really big and I've been told by several people now that you know I really shouldn't have planted it out. And, and honestly, I kind of knew that when I when I planted it out, but I really wanted to plant it, so that's what I did. Um, it's growing really well, actually, so I might just let it go and see because the beans on this side, while they are trellising up, they are not growing all the way across yet. Um, so I'll just see what happens, and if I have to cut it back or rip it out or something, then I will, but for right now, I'm just gonna let it go. So definitely one of the most exciting things in the garden are these plants right here, and they are my okra plants. Now, I actually have seen some tiny little okra pods coming out i'm trying to get a close up um they are the orange zing okra something like that from baker creek now i was really excited um to plant these and they are finally coming through they did take a little bit longer than i'm actually used to um for seeing the first signs of actual food coming out but i mean they did finally start growing and they actually have the most beautiful flowers um, there aren't any right now but for the past couple days you know I've seen a ton of flowers um, right where these um, these okra pods are and I'm just really excited to harvest it I'm getting a lot you can see there's one flower I think that just closed up all right so on the other side of the okra on this raised bed here we have some Roma tomatoes now these aren't nearly as infested by pests as the other tomatoes are, I have been coming in here and picking them as I see they turn yellow or orange. Um, I am seeing some back there. I don't think you see it because it's really bright outside. Um, but I am seeing some back there that are actually turning orange. Um, they are getting a little bit of the overwatering effect as well. So I'm going to come back and prune these out um, after I finish filming this video. Um, but for the most part, they're pretty healthy. They're, they're not getting too much pest. Now, separating things that get the same kind of disease is a really important thing to do and I'm really glad that I did this this season. In the opposite raised bed here I have some jade bush beans and you can see that these are doing really well. The leaves are nice and dark green. Um, they have been super prolific this season. I have harvested tons and tons of jade bush beans so far. Um, I'm trying to find some to show you guys. I think I probably harvested most of them yesterday um, but you can see some growing here. Now these don't seem like they're getting tons of disease or pests or anything so I'm really thankful for that. You can see some stuff coming in here um, but for the most part it's you know it's pretty dark green. I haven't really had to take care of them that much. I just come in here. Um, they don't need trellising or anything so I just come in here and harvest and each one of these plants I think there's maybe 30 something plants in here. Each one of these plants produces tons of pods so we have definitely been using um, jade bush beans so far this season and it's been really really good on the other side here I have my Cherokee wax beans which have actually also been really productive um, you can see that I still have you know some pods here after I harvested and there's actually um, there's a few that are bright yellow that I found now these I definitely wait until they're this color yellow to harvest them um, but they seem to to do really well I have grown these before um, and it has not been as good um, but this season, I mean, for some reason, my beans are doing really well. Tomatoes, not so much, but I guess that's how it goes, you know, when you're a gardener. Some seasons you're going to have, you know, plants that do much better for whatever reason than other ones. 
Now my Swiss chard is also doing pretty well. You can see that some of it has been getting eaten um, by pests, but for the most part, um, I've been using a lot of this as well. I've been picking a lot of it and feeding it to the chickens. Um, you can see a lot of new growth here and it's like bright green, but also you can see some of the, um, the caterpillar and the, um, <laughs> the other pest damage. Now in previous seasons I have been using a lot more of this and I didn't plant out tons of it this time just because you know like with the arugula um, I haven't been doing that many salad greens as much because we have other types of things like tons of beans and okra this season but it's definitely something that I will always grow because we do use it and I do feed it a lot to the chickens. All right, so before we get to the last box, which is the zucchini and yellow squash box, um, I will say that a lot of the pest issues that I've had um, are probably closely related to the overwatering issue. So when you have a lot of water in a place, right, um, you have a lot of standing water or the soil is really moist um, or you're overwatering your plants on a habitual basis, then you do get a lot more pests than if you know the soil is dry um, on the top layer. Now that could be for a lot of reasons, but I think the main one in this scenario is that those those creepy crawly things um, like moisture and they like you know a place to lay their eggs. And if there's a lot of standing water or if the soil is really moist and icky, you know, then those things just breed pests. And that's what's been happening here. So as soon as I started dialing back the water, um, which I've done in the past week or two weeks or so, um, as soon as I started doing that, I have seen a reduction in the number of pests throughout the entire garden, right? Um, I am still getting quite a few on my tomatoes in the front like I showed you guys. Now I think that one is probably due to the fact that I caught it really late and those are definitely the main um, plants being affected by cutworms and armyworms. Um, the majority of my other plants, you know, I'll see one or two worms here and there, um, but it hasn't been as consistent. Now, I don't know if I am going to keep those tomato plants, and as much as it pains me to say um, that I might actually rip them out, I think I might actually rip them out because they are just not doing well, um, and I have had to throw away more tomatoes than I've been able to eat. So it's not, you know, it's not fun to see your plants dying, and it's not fun to see um, something that, you know, you wanted to eat and harvest, and it just all has to go into waste. Um, but at the same time, it's definitely a lesson learned. And as a gardener, and even as an experienced gardener, you know, you're still going to be learning and dealing with different situations and not every season is going to be the same. There's going to be seasons where you have a lot of pests um, due to, you know, a different reason than the same pest you got last season. So you just have to kind of like roll with it and absorb whatever you can as far as lessons learned. My biggest takeaway from the irrigation um, is that I probably didn't need as much water as I originally thought, um, even though it hasn't rained. Now I have been coming over here and turning off the irrigation system a lot more frequently now. I walk the garden every morning but now when I see that the top layer of soil is still wet from the previous day um, or it's you know rained in the morning or something like that, if it is wet at all um, then I turn off the irrigation system that way it doesn't kick on that morning um, and just oversaturate the plants. All right, so in this box back here, um, we have zucchini and yellow squash. Now, these plants have actually um, been pruned a lot. I come in here quite often and take off whatever dead leaves and whatever dead stuff is growing on them. Um, we've had a lot of powdery mildew on them recently, so you can see um, I kind of like have hacked away at these plants a lot. But there has been tons of new growth after that. You can see all of these little baby zucchini leaves coming back out um, and we actually have a few flowers and some more fruit um, developing right now. You can actually see some in there starting to grow. Now I have harvested maybe like 10 zucchinis from the garden so far um, and definitely a lot of yellow squash as well so it's been doing really well you can see like all the cuts that I've made in here now I would definitely recommend if you're dealing with any sort of disease like powdery mildew to just get rid of anything that is infected and spray them down um, with an organic solution that way you're not spreading the disease everywhere else you can also see some kale back in there that was just volunteer kale from last season and these are actually not weeds I actually sowed some wild flower um, at the beginning of the season and they are starting to grow now I they're just kind of like a mix of different plants so I'm not exactly sure what all of them are um, but I just kind of like let them go 
and we actually have a ground cherry plant that decided to pop its head up here. I had no idea this was growing. I thought maybe it was just one of the wildflowers that I planted, but you could see some little ground cherries growing on the back side of it. Those will be ready to drop soon as well. Um, this is something I grew last season in a different bed. So it just goes to show how, you know, birds pick up whatever it is and this just kind of ended up here. It's a volunteer. It was definitely not growing in this bed last season. So I'll just leave it here. Um, it'll probably end up spreading a lot and taking up the majority of the back of this bed um, which for me is fine because the zucchini is mostly growing towards the front anyway it's kind of like pushed its way along um, I will say that in upcoming seasons I might try to see if I can grow some of these things vertically um, I know you can trellis zucchini I've never done it um, I'm not sure exactly how complicated it would be but it might be a good option to kind of keep it off the floor and prevent some of the disease so this month in the garden has definitely been interesting. We've had a lot of pest issues. Um, I have seen some really good signs in the garden like mushroom growing um, or just ladybugs and some monarch butterfly caterpillars, um, things like that. We have harvested a ton. We are finally getting a consistent harvest, um, especially of beans. I planted out, I think it was something crazy like 150 bean plants in this small, tiny little urban space. Um, but we are consistently harvesting beans. We've been consistently harvesting um, zucchini, yellow squash. I have gotten some tomatoes, not nearly as much as I normally do, um, but in all fairness, I usually get tons and tons of tomatoes anyway. So this month has definitely been a challenge because of the overwatering, um, definitely on my part and not knowing that the sprinklers were actually being turned on as well. I have definitely worked very hard to control some of these factors, so hopefully um, there will be a lot more new growth in the coming months, although it is going to start getting extraordinarily hot here as we go into the late summer. Um, I'm not sure how long some of these things will actually survive once the temperatures start getting into the upper 90s and hundreds but for right now I'm just going to be thankful that we are still getting a harvest despite all of these challenges and I'm actually off to go harvest some of these things um, I'm gonna get some beans pick up the rest of my tomatoes which are turning um, even orange or yellow anything other than green I'm gonna get them off the vine so they can't be eaten by anyone other than me um, and I'm gonna be harvesting some arugula and salad greens to feed to the chickens tonight um, thanks so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more urban gardening urban homesteading content I will see you in the next one. Thanks.